Would you please rise? Thank you for all for coming today to honor our, our friend and sister, a daughter. She meant so many things to many people. Today we are here to celebrate a life that she lived. She lived a life that's worth living, and she left a mark in all of our lives. Sue was one special person. I think the world comes, people come to this world and they go, and we all come and go, but there are certain ones that come, and you know there was one of a kind, and she sure was. And today we want to just honor her life, celebrate her life. There is, the Bible says that when, as believers, we, we mourn when we lose someone that is special in our lives, but we don't mourn as those who do not have hope. And I don't know how people do it when they don't have that relationship with Jesus Christ settled in their hearts, but it sure gives me strength and I can comfort myself and families can comfort their own hearts because of the way she loved the Lord. Would you bow our heads? Let's pray as we honor the Lord's presence in this service. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege that we have today to come together to honor your child, your daughter, your servant, Sue Hill. Lord, you graced the world with the gift of our life the last 64 years. And Lord, we are honored that we were got to be a part of it. Today, God, as we reflect, as we honor, as we celebrate her life, we ask for your presence to fill this place. Sue loved your presence and you've welcomed her into your presence. And today we ask you to fill this service with your presence as you, we honor your daughter for the glory of your name. Comfort the family, strengthen them, her children, her husband, her brothers and sisters, Lord, her mother, grandchildren. Father, we just pray right now the presence of the Holy Spirit over them to strengthen and to comfort them in this difficult time. We love you, we honor you, in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated, friends. Sue loved people. She loved the Lord. And she was a very sp special person. And this one, one, one phrase, you saw it, it was constant. Um, um, on the bottom of her email, when she signed her signature on the bottom, she had this phrase. If you go onto her Facebook page, it was on the, on the screen. It was her mantra, is that you love God. You do what matters most, and you diminish no one. I don't think those words were just words. She lived it. That's the testimony she left with us. As we go on with the service, I'm going to invite Merle, Sue's brother, uh, to, to read the scriptures for today. These are some of Sue's favorite scriptures. This is Acts 17, 27, and 28. That they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. Psalms 126, 5. And those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. In Psalm 91, 14 through 16, this is God's confession over us and over Sue who sought him. He says of her that because you've loved me, says the Lord, I will rescue you. I will protect you, for you acknowledge my name. You have called on me and I will answer you. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and honor you. And with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation.
This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Well, it's kind of a hard thing for me to say and do, but I feel honored to stand and just say a few words about Susie. She and I had a lot of good times together, and part of her life was suffered with illness of one kind or another, but God was so merciful. He raised her up, and I was there to witness that. And I just thank God for the life that she had and that she shared with me. Sometimes she would say, Mom, we're going to do this. I said, no, Susie, mm -mm. not today. She said, yes, today. We visited the sick together. We prayed together. We did many, and one of our great achievements were we visited all the basketball games and tournaments for about 20 years. We didn't know half of the people, most times not any of them, but we went. So that was another recreational time that we shared together. In her closing days, sometimes we would just stop, go out to the park and talk. Then we'd go over to the, I can't think of the name of it, but the restaurant on O Street, we went there a lot. Ch Ch what is it? Cheddars. We had a lot of fun there, and the people know us each time. <laughs> she was a fun girl, and sometimes we kind of alike, and then that didn't go too well. But <laughs> and she said to me, and I said to her, and and that's what first we got. But her last days were really close. I didn't go to the house. A lot of people thought because we lived right down the street, I went there daily, but I didn't. I didn't, I didn't bother them. Mm -mm. So the last days of when she drove in the driveway to pick me up, she took me to the doctor. She was my doctor, you know, too. She'd take me in and she'd beep three times. I better be ready to come out the door. Otherwise, she was in there. But the thing that got me most this time was the word again, cancer. I didn't want to believe it. But you know, through it all, she didn't cry every day about it. We talked about it. We talked about our families. We talked about the girls. She loved them so very much. And she told me, she said, each one has a little job that they do special. She was showing me how they did it. And on time, on time, you know, they was, by the time, and said, Allie would come and she would say, I have to leave, I'm going at 12. But she would do so, she was a cook too for Lucy. Beautiful dishes, all kinds. Of course, Tiffany was a mini me, a mini Sue. That's who she called her. And Patia, <laughs> on the dot right then and there. I mean, that's what's Tia, she said. And of course, her baby, Cammy. She sums it all up. <laughs> she tickled me saying it, but I said, okay. Okay, Susie. But she said, you know, Mom, through it all, and the obstacles and times, through it all, all I want for them to come to Christ. All of them to celebrate Jesus, and we'll all be together. And then she asked me one night, will you speak? I said, speak where? At my service. I said, girl, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> but I'm standing here because she asked me to. And the one thing we want to honor that, her love. She loved everyone. And she always kept talking about the water. And so this last week, we went to 4th of July in Missouri and came back a couple nights. The girls were, she and the girls were going to some restaurant. Some hideaway of fun, just the girls. So the, day she, the next day she told me, we're not going on that trip. We can go, we're going to the oceans, and to the river, and it's quiet there, and it's peace. And I kept thinking about the money of it, you know. I said, hmm, how am I going to get everybody to the ocean? But sleeping and waking, this past Sunday morning, the Lord woke me up and he said, She's talking about the water, the living water, where, we, where it will never end. 
So I said, hallelujah, water. So I thank God for the river of water. I thank God that we can all have this chance. Don't cost us a penny, she said. You don't need any money. We don't need no money. Just come. All of you can come. So we all can come. And today, each one of us, if we don't know Jesus and don't have him in our lives and not serving him, today is a great time. Friends as well, she loved everyone. And she was like, for everyone join, to join her in heaven one day. So I know she's sitting there looking. She met Honey, Charles, and all the family. I just want to live to meet her. And I thank God for her, her love. If she got tired of it, she didn't show it. <laughs> all so much patience and joy, and I'll never forget her, and I'll always love her. And to her four lovely daughters, my granddaughters, I'm gonna do my best to do some of the things Susie shared with you. God bless you. This song, Even If, is a bittersweet song for me. Um, when she asked me to sing it, uh, my, my reflexive instinct was to say, I'm not going to need to sing it because he's going to heal you. And he did. And I think... Um, the lasting testimony of her life, and hopefully I'll do this song some justice, is that no matter what the circumstance you put, even if whatever, even if cancer, even if marital dis destruction or family turmoil, even if our hope is still in him, I miss my sister. Y'all pray. Go ahead, John. <clears throat> they say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. And right now, right now, I'm losing in bed. I've stood on this stage night after night Reminding the broken it'll be alright But right now, oh right now I just can't It's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring me down But what will I sing when I'm held to the flame like I am right now? Cause I know you're able and I know you can You say through the fire with your mighty hand But even if you don't, my hope is you alone They say it only takes a little faith to move mountains. Well, good thing a little faith is all I have right now. So, God, when you choose to leave mountains unmovable, oh, give me the strength. To be able to sing It is well with my soul Cause I know you're able And I know you can You save through the fire With your mighty hand But even if you don't My hope is you alone Cause I know the sorrow And I know the hurt 
would all go away if you just say the word but even if you don't my hope is you alone you've been faithful you've been good all my days Jesus I will cling to you come what may Cause I know you're able I know you can Cause I know you're able And I know you can Say through the fire with your mind But even if you don't And I Thank you, John. What a beautiful tribute today. The Lord is faithful, and God is consistently good. He is good all the time. Good times, bad times, he is good. To give a few tributes today, I'm going to invite Sue's nieces, and Anne, Andrea, and uh, Alexandra. Hello, um, so can I take this off again? Hi, so I'm Adria, I'm TD's oldest daughter. Um, so I wasn't asked to talk by Aunt Sue, I just kind of saw my name on this list and assumed that that probably meant that I was gonna have to speak. Um, my job was to actually make the, the slideshow video and um, well, she asked, she asked me to do that, so I was prepared to do that. Um, <laughs> I came into town uh, to just kind of check on her and to, to pick up some stuff that I had left. Um, and so, you know, when uh, I had came, we like we talked a lot, just kind of sat around and uh, listened to music. I would always be like, hey, Aunt Sue, I have this rap song now. It, you know, it, ha it has some curse words in it, but like, I think it's really, really good. I think you'll like it, I think you'll like it. And she would always tell me like, okay, you know, but I gotta, I gotta close my eyes because I can't like listen to rap and, and like have my eyes open. You know, I, just, I hear the words better. <laughs> and so I was like, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, weird flex, but okay. So, and you know, now that, you know, now that she's, she's gone, I catch myself like, closing my eyes, listening to all these songs. So, you know, when it came time to do the video, I, I, I put off scanning these pictures because I just knew it was gonna be so hard. And then uh, the day came and my dad called me and was like, hey, I know you're super sad, but uh, you start those pictures yet, you know? He's like, there's a lot you gotta kinda get through, and you know, so I'm scanning them, and it's just so, uh, so interesting to see all these parts of her life I didn't, I didn't know about. She had the best fit, the best outfits I had ever seen, and I wish I had some of that style, but you know, if you look at pictures of me through the years, I always just wear a t-shirt and, and pants, so hopefully I, I can get some motivation from her through these throughout these years, but I'll miss her. We would talk on the phone like for hours about nothing and about everything. She always would be like, hey, you know, we've been on the phone for like an hour. You know, I gotta go check on grandma. Gra grandma's waiting for me. Or she'd be like, your mom's called me twice. 
we have to go now. But we never really said goodbye. It was always just like, okay, I'll talk to you later. So today we're kind of doing the same thing. So just to see you later. Still real hard though. Hey. Um, I also was not told I was going to talk. I'm not a good public speaker, but um, when deciding what I wanted to say, I don't know, but I wrote an acrostic poem, which is where the first letter of each line spells out a word. So I will be spelling out Sue Hill and saying a few words to describe her and what she meant to me and what she probably meant to you too. So S for sweet, she was genuine and kind. You never had to worry about her being upset. U for understanding, she always listened and never judged no matter what you were telling her. E, enjoyable, she was fun. She was always a pleasure to be around. H for helpful, she was a natural healer and helped whenever and wherever she needed. <laughs> I, inspiring, she inspired me to be a better person and she still does. L for loving, very obvious. She loved all of us and her love was unconditional. And L, the last L, for legendary, she is absolutely irreplaceable and you will never meet anyone else like her. Sue Hill, my Aunt Sue, she was everything. She was a light, she was a queen, she was home. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all the obstacles in my way. Gone are the gray skies that had me blind. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Every time I sang that to the residents at Tabitha, when I would see Sue Hill walking down the hallway, I would motion. Come over and sing this with me. And she and I sang, I can see clearly now, several times together. But I need to digress. The very first time I saw Sue Hill, I was a brand new employee at Tabitha, and I went to a live in service. Live stands for love your job, invite optimism, vision success, and embrace the mission. She drilled that into our heads every time we went to one of her in-services. She started them out with, all hands on deck. She, she rang this obnoxious bell, all hands on deck. And boy, did she get our attention. But she got all the hands on deck in Tabitha. Sue lived her faith every single day. When I think about Sue Hill, I think of her laugh. She had a big, hoarse, healthy laugh. Her intellect, her kindness, her faith, her introspectiveness, her singing, her friendship, her love. She was a mentor, a teacher, a counselor, a hugger, a brave warrior. One day I was having a bad day at work and the first person I thought of to go talk to was Sue Hill. So I walked to her office. She took one look at me in the door and she says, come on in, close the door. She knew I was having a bad day. Within a few minutes I was feeling much better because she was that kind of person. That's the way Sue Hill was. Sue and I got to fly down to Birmingham, Alabama to go through what we called greenhouse training. The greenhouse concept had to do with people living in small houses on our campus. When we got on the plane, there was a woman sitting next to us who was scared to death. She was afraid of flying 
And Sue sat there and held her hand through that entire flight and prayed with this woman. She didn't know her, but that's the way Sue was. When she gave her Give to Live program to the residents at Tabitha, what joy she brought. The Give to Live program was giving gifts to every single resident at Tabitha. She was uh, an elf right along with the rest of us, quite the character. And we spent the entire day with Santa making sure every single resident was paid attention to and given the gift that they had asked for. Sue was a vital part of that program. More than that, Sue influ influenced my spiritual life greatly. When I found out she was sick, I remember just crying my eyes out the very first time she found out she had colon cancer. And I, I uh, lost it because I had lost my husband to colon cancer. And so a lot of things flooded back to me. But the thing that she impressed upon me more than anything was her faith in God and her belief in the people that she worked with and the family that she had. She loved her family more than anybody. I was looking at some memories from when my husband died just this morning and I came across something that I wrote and this is appropriate for Sue and for all of us here. Life is quite a mystery. I believe we can be extremely resilient. I also believe that we can learn from all of our experiences. I believe no matter what happens, God is not doing this to us. He is helping us through. If we don't have God to see us through, we will drown. He is the only one who truly understands our pains, our sorrows, our happiness, our bewilderments, our lives, our thoughts, our dreams. I'd like to challenge everybody today. I want to be more like Sue because she wanted to be more like Jesus. If I could only hold a candle to what she taught me and taught so many of you in this room today. And I thought of another song that maybe we can all remember. Let me see you. Let them see you in me. Let them see you in me. Let them hear you when I speak. Let them feel you when I sing. Let them see you. Let them see you in me. Let them see you in me. God bless you, Sue Hill. Who was a worshiper? Something that is eternal. And more than anything, today I want us to stand up together and they, we're going to be led together and honor the Lord in worship, something she would love to do. Um, uh, would you join us together as the uh, worship team comes here and prepares? We're going to worship our Lord, something that Sue is doing right now in the presence of Jesus and is a angels in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to invite you to join in. If you know the words, sing out loud. Asu would direct Sue you to sing out loud. picked out all of these songs, so mm -hmm. these are some of her favorites. you 
It may look like It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded This is how I And this is how I fight my battles This is how I My battles Come on And this is how I fight my battles Oh, this is how This is how I fight my battles
you God we worship you God we honor you Lord you're God alone we magnify you I want to encourage you right now just take a moment because we know Sue is in the presence of the Lord and from your heart you can give glory to God I'm gonna ask those guys to repeat the one all the earth we'll sing it one more time oh guys I, they are done I might try with the band I want us I feel like the Lord is just wanting to touch our hearts and sometimes when he does and heal is when we worship in his presence. And I wanna, who's got a voice? I don't have one, but we could try this, all the earth. But I want you to just sing that to the Lord from the, from the depth of your heart, because we honor the Lord today as we celebrate our sister. All the earth. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great. Are you Lord? Let's do it. All the earth and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you Lord. Father, we thank you that you are so good and you are so faithful, God. Thank you for your presence in this place today. As we honor you, we know Sue loved worship. She taught worship. She led the people to worship. And she was a true worshiper. Today, we join with the angelic host and we say, Lord, be magnified. Lord, be exalted. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Amen. I'm Alice Bolingworth, Sue's oldest sister. I have a privilege and an honor and sadness in sharing her story. When we were talking, she long time ago, she asked, Alice, what do you want to do for my service? I said, girl, I want to sing a song, a solo. She said, okay. I said, no, no, no. I'm just going to do your obituary like I usually do. And when I sat down to write this, it was one of the hardest things that I had to do, because you see, there was eight of us, now there's six. So I wrote, and then I said, I sent it to my editor, Christina. She put a few things in, I let the girls look at it. I wanted everybody to have input, because I want to capture, and it's hard, of Sue. Bernice, Sue Annette Bowling Hill, 64, of Lincoln, Nebraska, went to be with her Heavenly Father on July 15th, 2020, a daughter of the King. Sue was born to Bernice and Charles Bowling on January 9th, 1956, at Carswell Air Force Base in Fort Worth, Texas. She attended Bancroft Elementary School, Clara McPhee Elementary, Everett Junior High, Lincoln High, and Anderson University in Indiana, from which she earned a registered nursing degree with a minor in music, a true servant of the Lord. She continuously exemplified her love for him through her professional and personal endeavors. She impacted and influenced countless lives, taking care of the community through her medical care at Baptist East in Kentucky and Tabitha Healthcare in Lincoln, 
where she served as a surgical nurse, a house manager, a nurse educator, director of education, director of corporate education, greenhouse educator, and a certified gerontologist nurse. She broke down medical racial barriers by rewriting health care manuals, introducing new teaching techniques that address caring for diverse people, and enlightening hearts and minds through her steadfast demonstration of intelligence, grace, and wisdom, and compassion. Physicians frequently commented she sues extensive medical expertise as she served her family in the role of primary medical health advisor, providing loving guidance and support through many challenges, health issues. A brilliant, beautiful, inspirational, and creative soul with magnetic personality. She exuded her unending love for the Lord through her daily encounters. She accepted the Lord at a very early age and began to serve him in many areas of church life. A talented musician, Sue carried melodies in her heart as a young child and continued to serve through her gifts of music throughout her lifetime. She sang in a trio and in choirs at Christ Temple Mission. In her youth, she founded and directed the in her youth, and she founded and directed the Lincoln Gospel Workshop Choir and directed the Lincoln City Church Choir and music programming in later years. She loved spending time with her daughters and grandchildren, making memories with family, friends, playing games, traveling, attending parties, and girls' basketball games and tournaments, and hanging out with her sister and mom gave her great pleasure. She was delighted by the small joys in life, such as handing out candy to children at church on Sunday mornings. She befriended all people, all ages, all ethnic backgrounds, and nationalities. Sue was a positive beacon of hope and a true genuine light in this world. Her life profoundly impacted her family, friends, the community, and everyone she encountered. Sue is preceded in death by her dads, Obasi Onaha, Charles Bowling, grandmother Annie V. Jones, and Rachel Woolrich, Uncle Rayford Jones, brother Charles Bowling II, nephew Joshua Church, and Brian Ockel. Sue will be remembered by her family um, with their, sorry, with her husband, Walter John, Sonny as we call him, and her daughters, Tiffany, Ron, Childress, Batia Hill, Allison, Julianne Hill, and Cameron, Matt, Van Hoos, mother, Bernice Onaha, siblings, myself and Mike, Pamela Bowling, Church and Merle, Patia Bowling, Herndon, Paul, Angela Onaha, Obasi John Onaha, Onique, Nikki Onaha, Jazinka, Daniel, N Natalie Whitman Onaha, children, Easton, Ava, Childress, and Julian Van Hoos, and many nieces and nephews, great nieces, great nephews, family members, friends, and her cat, Cajun, KK. Ladies and gentlemen, Sue impacted so much, and she achieved so much. Again, um, graduating with honors from high school to college, marriage, four lovely daughters, doing the choirs. Um, as a nurse, she was the house manager uh, in Louisville, Kentucky, Baptist East. The only, the first black and only black to achieve this position. This is so many achievements, but her greatest achievement, coming to know the Lord at a very young age and developing a personal relationship. And she told me, Alice, I don't care what you write about me, but let them know I love the Lord. Let them know. So she will be missed and is a whole in our family now. And as the drill said, I don't know if anybody can replace that. I personally will miss Sue playing games as little children, competition after competition. Even when she was adult, Sunday so would go to work uh, one visit. She came back, we're still at 7.30 playing games. So a great collaborator, education, again, 
We can go on and on. We will miss her. The family is sincerely thankful for your prayers, your support, everyone who shared in the deep and unending love of Sue. Sue had a way of making each one of us special. So let not, let's not forget her love for each one of us and remember her today and every day. As long as we live, Sue lives in us. She, Sue leaves a big hole in life, and we're not, let's just do it, all of us our favor. Let's not try to fill that hole. Amen? And um, she will be missed greatly. She loved, and she's deeply loved. Uh, these three ladies are going to pay tribute to her. They've worked with Sue for many years, and I'm going to invite um, Debbie Phillips, Jackie Castillo, and Eva Troy. Good afternoon. Like all of you, I will miss her. I met Sue when my husband joined the choir many years ago. We've been through a lot of different things. We tried to uh, encourage each other many times and to pray with each other so that we would know what God wanted us to do. Sue would say, I have to pray about it because I have to know what God says. And we'd look up the word. I have to pray about it because I want to know what God says. But we, she was the best friend you could have. She was faithful and caring and so godly. She taught me so many things. Um, the last time we, when COVID started, we couldn't see each other because of her being a little weaker. And so I didn't go over. And then one night I, I just really wanted to see her and talk to her. And it came to me that I could do a video chat and I'm not real knowledgeable. <laughs> And so Sue and I did a video chat, and it was hilarious to watch our age doing a video chat on the, on the phones. And then we started playing with those little hats and faces and stuff. And we got to laughing so hard that it was, it was the best time, you know, that you could end or put aside a friendship. But Sue always wanted us to remember that we need each other. We always need each other, the body of Christ, that God created us all individually, but we are all connected to do what God wants us to do, and we need to stay close so we can encourage each other and strengthen each other. Hi, I'm Deborah. Um, I know Sue from, we were raised at Christ Temple, and um, I was trying to figure how in the world am I gonna lump up a lifetime of friendship? You know, that's not an easy thing to do. But um, just briefly, um, I had to write it down because I'll go on and on. I said Sue and her sisters, Alice, Pam, T.D., and Charles, the younger ones came later. We were raised at Christ Temple. Our pastor was considered our grandfather, our father figure, Teo McWilliams and his wife, Margaret, whose foundation was love. So I just wanted to share a portion of 1 Corinthians 13. Because it was drilled in us all our life. You know, I think that's why we're all so, we try to love like Christ and live like Christ. It says love is patient, Love is kind, 
It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it is not rude. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And I heard a lot about that in Sue already today. So do you remember the little Sunday school song, Jesus Loves the Little Children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight? Well, that's how Reverend Trago made us feel, because he taught us about love. There was every nationality at our church. That's all we knew. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, visiting other churches, revivals. If the doors were open, we were there. That's back when sisters in the church helped you with your children. We didn't have nurseries or children's church, we, but we learned how to sit still and be quiet. <laughs> We had people like Sister Allie, Sister Carrie, Sister Connie. They'd correct us. They didn't ask mom if it was okay. They just corrected us. And then they would call our moms after church and let them know what we did. And then we'd get corrected again. We loved being together. Sister Bernice was, would call Sue and I the Siamese twins. Where you see one, you'd see the other one. We loved being at each other's homes. I see relationships now at our church of young girls. You could just see that the love that they have for each other and you, that lifetime friendship. I think I like being at their house more because they had more kids. <laughs> Angie and Nikki and John, they came a little later. The bowling and the Onaha family has a lot of love and they have opened their hearts and their homes to many like myself. Sue and I would bring each other clothes and then she liked to bring me jewelry, and I thought I would wear one of mine today that she brought me. She liked that native look, she said. A friend loves at all times. I got married and went to California. Sue went on to college, got married, and had four beautiful daughters. 16 years later, we had ended up back in Lincoln, Nebraska, and there was Sue. They came also. In our absence from each other, in our friendship, we learned that there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, and our sister. So now, my sister, you're not physically here with us. Holy Spirit, help me to depend on you. <sighs> For the comfort in the absence of my sister, my brother, Joe, I lost. This last month, may her reunion with Grandma Jones and Uncle Obasi and Charles be oh so lovely. I love you, Sue, and I'll miss you. Well, what can I say about Mama Sue that we all don't already know and already feel about her? I have many memories of our time together that I will cherish forever. The one memory that stands out the most is the day that I first met her. You see, I was done with life. Mama Sue and I were talking. At one point, she started to tell me things about my life that nobody knew. Then she said, God wants me to tell you what you have planned is not what God wants for you. Mama Sue told me that God, my father, loved me so much that he wanted me to live. At that moment in time, I felt God's presence like never before. You see, God and Mama Sue, they saved my life that day. Then in there, I knew what it was like to have a father and a spiritual mother. 
That was the day I started calling her Mama Sue. I will always be grateful and so blessed that this amazing, wonderful woman took her time to show me what faith was really all about. I know that I will see Mama Sue again. John 11:25 says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall live. So until we meet again, sleep in peace, my Mama Sue. It's a salute to a group I met in 1969. Ten years later, 90 million records later, all over the world, they are a smash hit. The, the Bowling will be here today, right here on the Bandstand. Let's give him the glory of his 
deserves. All the other gods, they are the works of men, but you are the most high God. There is none like you. All the other gods. of solitude to the bustling city room of the Daily Planet. Look. Up on the screen. Super Sue! Super Sue, the nurse. Rated PG.
I am walking into the future that God has promised me with great joy. Thanks, Andrea, for putting that together. What a joy, what a, a deep gap that can't be filled. Um, uh, today, we're gonna, her daughters are going to give a tribute to her, her four beautiful daughters, awesome people, take after their mother. Would you have? Was, we were teasing the other day, Tiffany, um, we were talking about how they say, you know, it's so weird that none of you became nurses. And Tiffany says, no, none of us became nurses, but the four of us combined, we make a really good nurse. <laughs> but just a wonderful family. Clearly, we have the best mom. She loved us all so well. Mom was ever present for all of our countless activities from basketball games to track meets, Girl Scout meetings, cheerleading fundraisers, and work events. You name it, she was there. <clears throat> Mom was a woman of integrity who found a lesson in each of life's circumstances. She loved with every fiber of her being and knew no stranger. Mom was a beacon of hope, light, and comfort to everyone she knew. We had our very own Nanny Poppins, and she made even the most mundane things colorful and fun. Your grandbabies love you beyond measure, and the memories you made with them will last a lifetime. We will miss your life talks in the hot seat. <laughs> no one will ever be able to do our hair like you did, and we would give anything to share our hopes and our dreams with you one last time. Your smile could light up the darkest room. Your laugh was contagious. Your hugs radiated love. Your kindness was genuine. Your authenticity was legendary. And the wisdom you imparted to us will always be cherished. Your faith could move mountains. We will greatly miss the prayers and support you bestowed upon us. And we couldn't ask for a better mother or a friend. We are forever blessed to be your daughters. We can't thank you enough for fighting so hard to be here with us. And although you're gone, we will do our very best to ensure that your legacy lives on. I think that a song should be shared among friends, but when those friends are gone, the melody and the meaning still lingers on. With tales of the good times and tales of the bad, Tales of when we're happy and when we're sad. Mom, everything you touched was a song. I'm just going to read a poem. I did not write this. <laughs> I'm trying to go slow. My mom always told me just to slow down. Uh, it's called Remember Me. Remember me with your smiles, not tears, for all the joy through all the years. Recall the closeness that was ours, a love as sweet as fragrant flowers. Don't dwell on thoughts that cause you pain. You'll see each other once again. I am at peace, try to believe. It was my time I had to leave. 
But what a view I had from here. I see your face, I feel you near. I follow you throughout the day, you're not alone along the way. And when God calls you, you will be right by my side, right here with me. Till then, I'll wait by heaven's door. We'll be united evermore. Mom um, wanted her to hear her girls sing at her funeral. Um, so we decided to share one of uh, the lullabies that she would sing to us girls in the same song that she sings to uh, Ethan and Ava and Julian. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. So please don't take my sunshine away. That was beautiful. Thanks, guys. The choir would come. Can be no, there's no Sue without a choir. And even right now in heaven, she has a heavenly choir out there. Maybe the Lord needed a new director. And so, thanks, guys.
Aren't you glad that that's not the way the story ends? And for those who know the Lord, like Sue, the story hasn't ended. The story hasn't ended. Today I want to share just a few thoughts um, uh, with you, just a short word that I've entitled, Keeping the Faith. So I watched uh, Sue walk through her life, her diagnosis, her walk, one thing that really, really impressed me is how she kept the faith. Literally to the very end, Sue kept her faith. And uh, I'm thinking a lot, and uh, it's hard when you got to speak about someone that's close to you. And you've seen in our life, Sarah and I would talk, you know, at our, at our church, you see, our church is not going to be the same without Sue. At City Church. She was part of our leadership team for a long time. And she was, became a very a personal friend to Sarah and I. And um, she does remind me a lot of our brother Charles. Sometimes scare, in scary ways. <laughs> they have the same jokes. And we will sit down sometimes for dinner. And, uh, and when the stories start... And the imitation, she could just imitate about anyone on earth and just repeat exactly how they say. I'm not even going to attempt to pull one of those. But there was something real special about that where she would just fire up a room with life. And I'm trying to think, how do I give it justice and, and, and today and, and, and share a few thoughts? And I'm sitting here listening to everyone, listening to the song. And I thought to myself, there's something about when someone walks the talk that they give. There's something about people who talk one thing and leave another. And that's not Sue. She lived her testimony because everything I wanted to say has already been said. I thought about Sue and thinking, how do I honor her life, honor the Lord and honor her life? Because she loved the Lord, she loved his word. And I thought of three attributes that in observing Sue's life that impressed me, and they are attributes that are spiritual, but also has eternal significance to them. First thing I wrote down is that Sue is a worshiper. Second is that she loved. She loved God and she loved people. And the third thing is that she's a fighter. 
I've seen that very consistently in her life. She loved to worship. As a person serving in ministry for, from a young age for a long time, I'd seen a lot of people come in, people that are very gifted and talented, they love music, they like all that. But you know, Jesus talked about there's a kind of worshiper that the Lord is looking for. Jesus once said that God is searching for the earth. There's going to come a time that God is searching for the earth and he's looking for people who would worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And you can pick out those people. Because Sue, she has a style of music. She liked to lead people to worship, but she was a worshiper herself. I watched how she led as a worship leader, choir director, worship team. Whether she's on the lead or she's behind the scene or behind doing nothing, she was consistent in her worship. In a one-on-one -on -one situation, she worshiped. She talked about the Lord, but she loved the Lord and she loved to worship. And I thought all her life, the way she loved to worship and lead others to worship, it was a preparation for the glorious day where she is joined together with her Lord and her Savior, with the angelic host today, praising God continually as the Bible says in Revelation, that all through heaven, the proclamation that God he is worthy, worthy is the lamb. She's singing with the angels today. It's awesome to be able to stand here. And though you feel sad and the void, there's something about looking forward to because you know she walked her life. She lived what she preached. She tried her best to prepare people not just to sing or hit the right notes, but to have a heart of worship. I remember just uh, how she would tell me, people, oh, you know, I'd like so-and-so to get to the choir. They can't sing. <laughs> but I saw what Sue was trying to do is not getting them to just sing in the choir. And she'll walk with anybody, but she wanted people to have a heart of worship. And I th that's why I thought, you know, one of the things we could do today is to honor her in worship. But the other thing is, is that we don't want to say goodbye. We want to be able to say, we'll see you again. And we'll join with the big choir out there. The choir that it's described in Revelation, men of every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every people from that has ever lived that have known the Lord that will be joined together and will continue to sing and worship the Lord. Sue loved people. She loved the Lord. Obviously, in her mantra, she says, love God, do what matters most, diminish no one. She loved people, and it is reflective in the way that she served people. In the book of five language books, I know it's about marital love, but we can learn a few things, you know. Sometimes love can be expressed through service. And Sue was a servant, if ever was one because she cared for God's people. She loved the Lord, but she loved God's people. I remember many, many times in our meetings, she would be the one to pause sometimes and, and, and think of the ones that maybe would not have a voice, and so would be the voice for them. She served even when she didn't have strength to serve. A couple weeks ago, our church normally does a barbecue on 4th of July weekend. And with all this pandemic, uh, so much has changed. And, you know, you have to look and see. She called me and said, hey, Pastor Solo, i to ask you a question. Are we doing the barbecue this year? I'm like, I don't, I'm not sure we're going to have the barbecue. But we're going to see what happens here. She goes, well, let me know if we do, because I'd like to help. I know I can't run around and all that, but I could organize people. I could talk to a few people. She, you got to realize where she was in her strength physically, but she wanted to serve. She wanted to help. Not being asked, I'd like, I'd like to do whatever I can. Reminds me of John 15, 
It says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friend. When Sue could use any, everybody's help collectively, she still wanted to serve people. It's a testimony that goes on. It exemplified the servanthood of Jesus. And the third thing is that Sue was a fighter. She still is. She was a fighter. And I've never seen anyone walk through a road as tough as she walked through with that much strength, dignity, and faith. She kept her head up, still wanted to encourage people. She wouldn't let you see her weak, not because she was hiding anything, no. She wanted to be an encourager. Now remember in this walk, she would pray for a miracle. And I'll listen, I'll talk to Sue for a long time and just listen to see about how she's been praying, believing God, I know my God can. And if you've been around long enough, you know about her notebook. And when she writes in red, she knows the Lord talked to her, so she writes in red. He says, the Lord, heal me. The Lord is going to heal me. She still fight. But as we talk about it, and I listen to her talk about why she wants to get healed, and it's not selfish to want to be healed and be well. But behind that was not a selfish reason. It was always she wanted people to glorify God and to find God. She wanted people to have hope and believe that God is a good God. I want people to see my life and say God is surely good. I want people that have gone far from God to be reconciled. She wanted their testimony, not that just she, she got what she wanted or desired, no that others, perhaps, who've had a fog in their mind, in their eyes, others, perhaps, who are blinded, could somehow get the spark of faith in their hearts and they'll begin to believe God. And I know this because she fought and she saw there were many testimonies of when she overcame. She pushed every goal line that was given her. Every goal line that was given her, she pushed, she pushed through it. She pushed it. You know, it's like, oh, so I think six months. Well, I'm going to show you it's not going to be that. So I don't know, but I know my God. And God gave her many years after, and she's fought. I remember just two weeks ago, it's my wife and I, Sarah, they said we drove by our house, and she had just pulled in. She, they had just pulled in with her sisters from um, the trip in St. Louis. And she just had a fire in her, an energy. And I'm looking at her, I was like, wow. She was like, just on top. She's just excited. It's like, it was such a beautiful time. And, and she goes on and on and on and on. And, and she goes, you know, I'm going to go to, I think I'm going to go to California. See the ocean. And I, that really st- stayed in my in my heart, like her mom shared earlier in the service, you know, and maybe she was speaking prophetically about the sea of glass or the rivers of life. And this last battle, as she fought, and she also pushed the goal line. Every time the nurse will say, ah, she'll push the goal. Then you know how many people separately I've talked to and they thought to themselves, huh, what is the Lord doing here? Okay, if you thought there might be just another miracle that gets pulled in, raise your hand. See, she made us believe. She fought and she, she gave us hope. Even to the end, she kept the faith. I was thinking, did you lose the last battle? And I refuse to accept that. She did not lose the last battle. It had gotten to a time and it had come 
Jesus had a situation like that. He knew what he was facing, what was in front of his eyes. He knew what was coming up. Went on and prayed passionately to God. And says, Lord, my Father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. Nonetheless, not what I want, not my will, but yours, O God. And in the same, as he encourages disciples, Jesus, he said, all I could do is call my father right now and he'll send a host of angels. But he knew my time had come. Sue parting from this world at the time that she did, we would love to see a long, long time. Sometimes it feels unfair because life seems like that that way. But the Lord numbers our days. She did not lose. The Lord Jesus Christ said, Welcome home, my good and faithful servant. This is the word that the Lord put in my heart during that time. I've recited it many times. Second Timothy 4, 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. She kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. One conversation I had with Sue about um, two years ago, going back to my second point, how she loved the Lord and loved people, and it was displayed in the way that she served is that she told me, I am not afraid to die. I'm not trying to hang on. I'm ready to meet my Savior. Even, even knowing what she's facing, she goes, I know for me it's a win-win situation. It's a question that Apostle Paul had to come to at one point in his life. He understood the call that God had in his life, and he knew that that call might even mean him dying. But he looked back and thought, how do I reconcile that? How do I reconcile this? I gotta keep and carry on the call that God has put in my life. And Paul said, you know, for me to get by is gain. All the more. If I stay alive, I'm gonna keep preaching, I'm gonna keep sharing the message that God has put in my life, I'll keep preaching the gospel. If I die, that's all the better as well, because I'm gonna be with the Lord. And Sue said the same thing. She says, I know that where I'm going, it's a win-win situation one way or the other. I want to live, I want to see a miracle, I want to, be, I want to be healed, but I want that so others cannot lose out on the joy of eternal life. The Bible says that it is appointed for man to die and after death judgment. And that's what kept Sue fighting. It's not that she was afraid, and she said that very clearly. It's not that she was afraid. She would much rather be with the Lord. But she was thinking about us. She was thinking about her family. She was thinking about the people that are going to believe. And the more importantly, she wanted everyone to have an opportunity to have that testimony. That we can go today, we're not saying goodbye. It's like seeing you again. Because we know in our hearts that we've reconciled with God. That we've accepted the Lord. And I hope today... That through, as we honor our sister and our friend, that you, if you haven't made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, reconcile with God, you don't have that peace that says it is well with my soul. Today you have an opportunity to make it right with God. It's very simple how God makes it. I've always said the, the story of salvation, the story of God loving us and caring is so simple that sometimes we can overlook it. Have you ever thought sometimes some things are so simple that you think that can't be all? There's got to be more to it. It's, it's got to be more complicated. In a sophisticated society, 
We tend to pride ourselves in our development. And so sometimes it's easy to miss the beauty of simplicity. And I believe God that made the story of salvation it's the most important message that the world has. He had to make it very simple that the least among us could reach it. When you go to the grocery stores and you know how they put the, when you go to the grocery store with kids, I guess that's a different perspective. I was going to say, which I have 10 kids, so many of them little ones. You go to the grocery store, they are stuck with little kids. There are certain things that they put right around your knee or between your knee and your ankle range. You never see it when you go to the store alone. But there are certain ones, and usually they, those types of things taste better. But they have it where the littlest eyes, littlest hands can reach it. That's why the most important message to all humanity is one of the most simple messages on earth. That sometimes when we, get, we have to get out of our sophisticated mentality to actually achieve it. Simplicity. I just think of in the 1990s, late 1990s, there was Yahoo, there was Google. Yahoo was a search engine that had pretty much the whole world to itself. But their homepage was fogged up with every news imaginable. And slowly, Google figured out something. Now we, it's even a verb. It was just white page, little search bar, Google. Kids that are born now, they, they think it's just part of life. And somehow, some way, that competition of search engine market share was won by the company that figured out that there is more in less simplicity. Sue had that simplicity of faith. She didn't complicate the word of God. She just lived it and trusted God. God's message for all of us to keep that faith, we need to declutter so much in our minds and come to the simple message that God loves you. God cares for you. He would do anything to get your heart. And I believe Sue hang around longer and listening to conversations that we even had in person. We used to have a joke in that whenever we'd have a meeting, her and I, and I noticed one niece said it and realized I wasn't alone. We say, Sue, before we meet, we know why we're meeting today. Let's set the alarm. Because we had a tendency to make the other people wait so long because that meeting will just go on in different rabbit trails. Um, I think it was Andrea who said we talked a lot about nothing and everything. I thought that was really good. I'm glad I wasn't alone. But she hung around for us. She wanted to make sure that when we get, when our time comes, that we will, we will not miss the simple things of faith that we could see each other again and celebrate God, that we could keep the faith that she had. Let's carry it on as long as we are here. Would you stand with me? We're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are a loving God. You love the world so much that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us, Lord. You said in your word that whosoever believes will not perish, but have everlasting life. We thank you that your daughter Sue found this message, the simple message of the gospel, given indiscriminately to every human being on earth. 
that we can make a decision to accept your love, your gift of salvation. Today, I just pray over this congregation, this group of friends and family, everyone that's sitting here, that thoughts cross their mind. If I die today, this was me, this was the story of my life, can I most assuredly make that statement and be confident about it? I pray for those ones that are in, a, in between, not sure. Just right now you'll give them the strength to be those who say, Lord, I need you. I need you in my life. Give them the strength and the courage to open their hearts to you, Lord, today. We love you. We honor you. If you would just keep your eyes closed for a moment, I'd like to pray for you. If you're listening today and you're thinking, that's you, maybe I described you, and you don't want to be left out on that day. And today you want to make Jesus your Lord. Accept that simple message of God, of Jesus in your life. Maybe you have known this. When I'm talking about this, it's not new information to you. You've, but you've walked away from God. And today you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. I'm going to take a moment just to ask you to honor the Lord's presence right now because I'm going to pray a very simple prayer. But I want you to join me. That's you just wave at me. I have my eyes open to say that's your step of faith. To say, yes, Lord, I want you in my life. That's you. Just wave where you are. I'm going to see your hand. If you'd like to accept Christ, as you say, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. If you would help me pray. It's a little dark, so I couldn't tell, but I saw at least one hand. But let's pray together collectively right now with the individual or individual sat. Raise their hands. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today just as I am. Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. And I need you in my life. But today, I'm opening my heart to you. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and to come into my life. Fill me with your spirit and give me the strength to follow you so I can have that steadfast assurance that one day I will see Sue again in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. You may be seated. If you prayed sincerely in your heart, the Lord is celebrating with you, and I'm sure Sue is celebrating as well. Amen. God bless you. I'm going to invite Sunny um, to come over and to lead us in this song, Be Encouraged. Actually, I think we're going to do it together. If you know the song, it'd be great to join the rest of the choir and we can sing together. So as they come on, prepare to stand once they get all settled. says, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I'll say it again. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Will you please stand and help me honor my dear wife, Sue, one last time. And if you know the song, sing with us. Be encouraged. And Sue, I love you. And thank you for loving me more than I deserve. <clears throat>
when trouble and pain come upon you you don't have to bear it all alone by putting your faith in Jesus you'll find peace and joy of your own for he is with you he'll not forsake you when these trials will make you make you stronger you children of God Cancer and pain come upon you. You don't have to bear it all alone. By putting your faith in Jesus, you'll find peace and joy of your own. It sure makes it easier when you know someone's faith and where they've been. As we can be encouraged because she knew her God. Amen. I'm going to pray right now and then we'll invite Candice. Maybe you could come over around the choir as we pray. And she's going to do a dance. It's a tribute to Sue today. Father, we love you. We honor you. 
Thank you for the words of that song, God. Let us remember to, that you love us. You'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. Father, I pray right now for the family once again. As this day is over, the weeks have come by, I pray, God, just your presence over them. Would you, all over the congregation, I know the family is centered around the middle aisle, would you just stretch your hand in faith and let's pray over them right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this wonderful family. It's been a rough few years that they've lost several loved ones recently. And today, Lord, we say farewell to our sister Sue. We know that she leaves so many gaps in this family. But God, as we heard the choir sing with Sunny there, I pray that they'll be encouraged in knowing that they are not alone, that your presence will overshadow them, that your spirit will come upon them, that Lord, you will provide for them every need that they find, oh God, spiritually, emotionally, physically, even financially, in any way that they find themselves in need. Let them see you and know you as Jehovah Jireh who provides at every time they need. I pray for strength and comfort. I pray for Tiffany and um, and the sisters, Lord, and the grandkids and the spouses, God, we ask, Lord, for these kids. We ask in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, you would just continue to strengthen them. In this next chapter of their life, oh God, as they begin to cope with a new normal in their lives, I just pray that, God, let them feel the warmth of your embrace every time they feel lonely or alone. Let them know that your spirit is with them, God. We pray for our sister Bernice. We pray for this. Uh, the siblings, God, and the nieces and nephews, God. We pray for all of them, Father, today. As friends, we stand with them today. We stretch our hands in faith, Lord. We say the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his faith to shine upon you, Lord. I pray that the Lord will bless you in your coming in and in your going out, in your rising up and in your laying down. May he shine the light of his countenance over your life today. May he give you strength. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Sue's family, we love you. We're so grateful for you. You're not alone. All these people around here in the middle of a pandemic, they wanted to just say that to you. You know, everybody, I'm sure if they had a chance to say, they'll say a lot. But we just want to let you know as your friends that we love you and you're not alone. God bless you. I'd like to thank Pastor Brian Clark and the team here at Berean for such a wonderful reception. We would have been very crammed and nearly impossible at our church uh, with their sanctuary, but it was great to be able to have room to spread out, to be able to send our dear sister uh, a wonderful home going. And um, God is good. I say that all the time. You can help me now. God is good. And all the time. You may be seated and enjoy this uh, dance as, uh, before we go.
Take me to the king I don't have much to bring My heart's torn in pieces It's my offering Lay me at the throne Leave me there alone To gaze upon your glory And sing to you Thank you, Candice. Thank you. To commemorate, last but not least, to commemorate her Sue's uh, work as a nurse, we're going to have Jeanette. I was privileged to know Sue as a friend and colleague for many, many years. She was a registered nurse for over 40 years, and she was the epitome of any nurse. She was intelligent. She was kind, and she was compassionate. She was also a dynamic educator. She helped many educate many of the nurses and nursing assistants in this community. So at this time, I would ask that any nurses present please stand as we honor Sue for her many years of service as a registered nurse with the Nightingale Tribute. Nursing is a calling a lifestyle, a way of living. Nurses are here today to honor Sue Hill and her life as a nurse. Sue is not remembered by her years of service as a nurse, but by the difference she made during those years, by stepping into people's lives special at special moments. And I'd like to read a poem. When a calming, quiet presence was all that was needed, Sue was there. In the excitement and the miracle of birth, or the mystery and loss of life, Sue was there. 
when a silent glance could uplift a patient, a family member, or a friend, Sue was there. At those times when the unexplainable needed to be explained, Sue was there. When the situation demanded a swift foot and a sharp mind, Sue was there. When a gentle touch, a firm push, or an encouraging word were needed, Sue was there. In choosing the best one of the family's thank you box of chocolates, Sue was there. To witness humanity in its beauty, in good times and in bad, without judgment, Sue was there. To embrace the woes of the world willingly and offer hope, Sue was there. And now that it's time to be at her creator's side, Sue is here. Sue, we honor you this day and give you a white rose to symbolize our honor and appreciation for being our colleague. Nurse Sue Hill. Nurse Sue Hill. Nurse Sue Hill. We officially release you of your nursing duties. Thank you very much. Yes, that's all right. It's appropriate. We're going to thank you very much all for coming today and um, honoring Sue the best we can. Uh, the family will proceed as we go out. The ashes will lead you out. If you just bear a second, we'll let the family go out first. God bless you. Once again, Pastor Brian and Barian team, can we just appreciate the team for answering and helping us? Thank you very much. Very short notice. God bless you.